Was it possible that a hospital can bill $38,000 for a single dose of a cancer drug, yet the same dose in the UK goes for about $260. It happened to a man in suburban Chicago who was being treated for prostate cancer. Insight from Paul Siegert, managing partner at PCS Advisors, a benefits advisory firm. Paul, what's going on? And it's crazy because this same drug in the UK would be 200 and something pounds. And it's been around since the 1970s. So it's, it's, you would think that it should have long since passed through all of its protections, patent laws and all that kind of stuff. And, and yet in our system, we'll allow them to make some minor variations to a drug and then it will, it'll restart all those time limits. So that puts these drug companies in a position where they can charge pretty much what they want. Uh, and they have the agreement of providers or kind of the alignment of interests with providers because the providers that administer the drug, a lot of times these are uh, infusions or shots that are given in a provider's office or at a hospital. They make tens of thousands of dollars each time one of these is uh, administered. So they have an interest in it, even if sometimes, which is true in this case, there are other treatment options available that might be pill form that might be a fraction of the cost. Wow. Uh, but this this might get recommended, and certainly the the dollars are part of the story at least. Yeah, go back to your reference about uh, the cost in the UK, which might be the equivalent of about two hundred sixty dollars. Yet here uh, in the US, it could cost thirty eight grand for a single dose of a prostate cancer drug. Um, are, are we paying for research and development on this side of the pond? Like, like <laughs> what, what happens here? How, why that huge love, huge disparity? It, that's what the industry will tell us. I'm sure. But, when you look at the, the dollars and how they flow, the, the manufacturers of these drugs are often looked at as the villain, but they get a declining amount of revenue year over year in many cases on these drugs. And then you have, uh, in this type of instance, you have pharmacy benefit managers that are middle players managing the formulary for health plans and wield a lot of power because they get to control can a drug go on the list or not. And they charge uh, and they correspondingly go turn to the manufacturer and say, we'll put it on the list, but we're going to require this much money to do so. And so they're inflating cost incredibly. And then in this example here as well, you've got, uh, it's a huge revenue generator for uh, providers. Boy. And there's also the difference um, between ad actually administering the drug, right, in your in your building if you're a doctor versus just writing a prescription for one. I didn't realize that. No, absolutely. And it can make a very big difference where you get the, uh, this kind of treatment. If it's in a hospital, it's going to cost on average 86% more than it's, if it's done in a, a doctor's office or a private clinic. Goodness. Uh, and there's that kind of variation is happening, all, all, you know, unfortunately, all too commonly. And then you also have situations where the government has come up with programs. 340B program is a program that... Uh, without getting too much into the weeds, a hospital can qualify for this program or a provider can qualify for this program where they can access these drugs cheaply with the intent that they would, I mean, the original intent of the program wasn't that they would use that as a way to generate far more profits for their organization, but that in practice a lot of times is what happens. And in this example of this gentleman in Chicago, likely the facility got that drug at a very reduced price, like what it would have cost in the UK, and then simply marked it up $37,000, $38,000, and wow. made a huge delta there uh, because, because they could. We're speaking with Paul Siegert, managing partner at PCS Advisors, and we're talking about why a single dose of a cancer drug in the U.S. can cost $38,000, where in the UK it might be just about $260 for that single dose. Uh, explain to you, you touched on it earlier about uh, extending patents for just minor changes to drugs. That's, a, I guess, a wink-wink between uh, regulators and the government and the pharmaceutical industry. Right. And, and there's, there's some interesting things that go on around that. In this case, uh, they made it slow release uh, as one example, and that, gave, that kind of reset the timelines on, as, as for the length of time that they would have protection and be able to exclusively sell the drug. That's an issue. Thanks, Paul. Paul Siegert, Managing Partner at PCS Advisors.